بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اے کورس فار کلاس الیون اسٹوڈنٹس آئی نیم دس کورس می رائٹ دا کورس نیم دا کورس از انیمیٹ فزکس فار class 11 in this course uh, we will complete all the concepts of physics pertaining to class 11 whether the class belongs to any state board or central board of school education so this course will be very helpful for all students who are studying in class 11 in any state of india or in any part of subcontinent who can uh, understand my language right so i will give you the course structure the syllabus structure for class 11 goes like this if you see any syllabus whether it is state board or central board of school education the syllabus is divided into certain units so let me write the name of the units we have unit first which is which pertains to the the portion of the mathematics which is required for understanding or expressing physics which we call elementary mathematics elementary mathematics so it is the first unit in most of the syllabuses then we have unit 2 which is kinematics then we have unit 3 which is laws of motion then we have in four which is work energy and power then we have unit fifth which is motion of systems of particles and rotational motion rotational motion of a rigid body motion of systems of particles and rotational motion of a rigid body then we have unit 6 unit 6 is gravitation we have unit 7 Unit seven is oscillations and waves. Then we have unit pertaining to
Link. Unit 7. Then we have Unit 8. Unit 8 is heat and thermo dynamics. I think these are all the units of the syllabus pertaining to class 11th. Yeah, there is one more pertaining to the motion of fluids, which I have missed. Let me name that unit 9 that pertains to fluids at rest and views in motion. Now this is the broad outline of the syllabus which is prescribed by the Central Board of School Education or the State Boards in India. I will give you a brief outline of the syllabus first what it contains, what we have to discuss. Let me change the color of my pen. Now we will red. That is okay. So in unit first, elementary mathematics, what we discuss? We discuss certain ideas like the idea of a function. We discuss the idea of limit of a function, limit of a function, limit of a function. We discuss the idea of differentiation. We discuss the idea of integration. Then, in integration, we know we have definite integral and indefinite integral. We discuss both the ideas, and then, then we discuss differentiation and integration of some of the elementary functions. For example, I will give an example. We have to discuss differentiation of the sine x function. Differentiation of sin x is cos x. Now we will be establishing what it means and how we establish this result. This was just an example. We have to discuss the differentiation of some other elementary functions as well. So this elementary mathematics unit contains the ideas which are required for expressing or understanding physics at your level. In this unit, we have to also discuss the properties of vectors. You know from your previous classes that we classify physical quantities broadly into two kinds scalars and vectors. So here we discuss the properties of vectors, how we express the vectors using graphical method, how we add them, subtract them. Then we discuss ideas like dot product of two vectors, cross product of two vectors, and all other related ideas. Then kinematics, as you know, Mechanics is the oldest branch of physics, that branch of physics which deals with the study of objects in motion. And we divide this study 
of mechanics into two parts one is kinematics second is dynamics in kinematics we discuss the description of motion we describe motion your description of different kinds of motion and in dynamics we discuss the causes of motion for example you see in your surroundings different types of motion for example a car may move in a straight line along some road you can see the motion of some football in air you can see motion of some mass attached to some spring so there are different kinds of motions taking place in our setting in our surroundings now we give description of those motions through mathematical equations and through graphs and when we question what causes some motion to happen this way and not that way for example why some mass attached to some spring oscillates in a particular fashion and some mass which is dropped near the surface of earth falls in a straight line when we question the causes of motion we are discussing dynamics so unit second pertains to kinematics and unit third is dynamics because in dynamics the causes of motion are answered by newton's laws of motion and in newton's laws of motion you know the main equation is sigma f is equal to ma where m is the mass of a body a is its acceleration and sigma f represents the resultant of all the forces acting on it we will be discussing it and we will be uh, discussing how to use this equation and uh, applications of newton's laws one application we will discuss that's called atwood's machine and just giving you the rough idea of your syllabus then we have to discuss in unit 4 work energy and power you know in physics we define work work is done by some force energy we define then we talk of the power power is by definition the rate of energy transfer or rate of work done actually in physics what we do we have if we talk of motion of an object to deal and discuss and make predictions in the motion of some body we have two approaches one is called vector approach and second is called scalar approach now in vector approach we use newton's second law newton's law of motion because it's a vector equation so when we discuss motion of an object using newton's laws of motion we say we are using vector approach now there is an alternative approach which is scalar approach now this unit four is basically that scalar approach which we use to discuss motion of objects on unit 5 we talk of motion of systems of particles and rotational motion of a rigid body rigid body is a particular type of body in which we have parts of the body fixed relative to each other and rotational motion is the motion of one of the motion for example you see your ceiling fan it is when it is in motion the this is the example of rotational motion of a rigid uh, body with its axis of rotation fixed. We have to discuss such motions, how we describe such motions. We use different physical quantities. We call that rotational kinematics when we describe rotational motion. Then here we express Newton's laws differently 
For example, in rotational motion, you write your Newton's second law as net torque is equal to I alpha, where I is the rotational inertia, alpha is angular acceleration, and sigma tau is the resultant torque or net torque acting on the body. So we have to establish such a relationship. And system of particle motion means in certain situations we can treat the body as a single particle, but in some situation and ignore its size, disregard its size, but in other situations we have to treat it as a system of particles. For example, if you compare the motion of the sliding wheel with the motion of rolling wheel. In sliding wheel, all the parts of the body move in the same fashion. So we treat it as a point part. But in rolling wheel, different parts move in different fashion. So it is in physics taken as the system of particles. So such motions, when we have to discuss the motion of systems of particles that come in this unit 5. And you would come to know in later lectures that we introduce in this unit an important idea which is called center of mass. Now defining center of mass helps us in studying and discussing the motion of system of particles. Now details will follow. Now in unit 6, which is a gravitation, we discuss the uh, gravity you know is the binding force. We are bound to earth by gravi gravitational force of earth. We discuss Newton's law of universal gravitation, F is G, M1, M2 by R square, which is the scalar form of Newton's law of universal gravitation. You know it from your previous classes. Then we express this gravitational force in vector form. We have to discuss the gravitational potential energy. We have to talk about conservative and non-conservative forces. All that will come in this unit. And in unit 7, we have to discuss oscillations and waves. Now, you know, in oscillation, when we talk of oscillation, we talk of the model oscillator, which is called simple harmonic oscillator. What is simple harmonic oscillator? If I tell you that if you oscillate a pendulum in a vacuum and if you oscillate it for small displacements, it is simple harmonic oscillator. Now, why we define first on the first place that uh, simple harmonic oscillator? Because it helps us to deal with the oscillatory motion, to and fro motion. All oscillations, whether it is some mass at a oscillating under the action of sipping force, whether it is some atom oscillating in a crystal, all such oscillations can be explained using the ideas of simple harmonic oscillation, provided their amplitude of oscillation is small. So we define simple harmonic oscillator, then use the ideas of simple harmonic oscillator to all oscillation for small amplitudes. Then we have waves. You know, wave is by definition a disturbance. The disturbance can be in some physical quantity. This disturbance can take place in the displacement of the particles of the water on some water surface. If we disturb the water, we call that water wave. It can be sound wave, can be light wave. We have to discuss how we deal with the motion of a wave, how we mathematically express the motion of a wave. We will be discussing the classification of waves. We classify waves uh, using different criteria. Sometimes we call a wave 
transverse way, for example, light way. Sometimes we call some other way a longitudinal way. So all those ideas we have to discuss in detail. Then in unit 8, we have to discuss heat and thermodynamics. I will tell you thermodynamics is a separate branch of physics. It is a vast branch and important branch of physics, so it has its own laws. We have to discuss laws like zeroth law of thermodynamics, first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics. You will understand why some things go one way and not other way. For example, if you take a cup, hot cup of tea, it's hot, and place it in your room, the surroundings are colder than the tea. The heat available in this hot cup of tea by its own, on its own, leave the tea and go to the surrounding air. No agent, no agency is required to do this process, but reverse doesn't occur. He doesn't come from the colder air and enter into the hot cup of tea. When the conservation of energy has no objection, both processes means the heat coming out of the hot tea and entering into the colder air is equally allowed by conservation of energy to the heat going from colder air into the hot tea. But the reverse process doesn't occur. Why so? You will let to know, yeah, you will get to know there is a law which restricts such things or establishes or expresses that such events can't occur in nature, which is called second law of thermodynamics. So we will discuss that. Now, if when fluids are at rest, we talk of certain ideas. You may be familiar with certain things. For example, we talk of pressure in a fluid. We talk of Pascal's principle. We talk of Uh, we talk of uh, the variation of pressure in an atmosphere. We talk of variation of pressure in some lake. In some lake, when you go down the lake or in some swimming pool, as the depth increases, pressure in the fluid increases. And in atmosphere, when you increase the altitude, go up, the pressure in the atmosphere decreases. How? Why? We have to discuss those ideas. Now, in fluids in motion, the main thing which we have to discuss is the Bernoulli's theorem or equation. We will see that Bernoulli's theorem or Bernoulli's equation is just the work energy theorem with an idea which says net work done on a body is equal to change in kinetic energy. So we will see the Bernoulli's equation is just work energy theorem for fluid motion. So all these ideas we have to discuss. I hope you will join me. You will go through all my lectures. It will be helpful for you. So this is the introduction only. I stop here in order to make it interesting. I will make short videos, not long videos, that will be helpful because your attention span is not that long. I know that I am teaching for last 22 years approximately, so I know how students behave in class whether offline or online. So this is all for today. I stop here and don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.